It's the Geeky Waffle Podcast. Today we're talking about what popular characters are actually the worst. I'm Candice, and with me are my co-hosts Bree and Vanessa. Hey! And this conversation started after I started binge-watching Gilmore Girl. And I grew up watching it, and I thought, Rory is my role model. She was older than me. She went to a good school. She wanted to be a journalist like I wanted to be. As the seasons went on, I thought her character got worse and worse. But re-watching the whole series, all seven seasons, and a year in a life, I realized Rory was always the worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hands her, down. I mean, like her- her and Lorelai, honestly. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe, oh, it was Logan was a bad influence and all this kind of stuff. No, in season two, no, season three, she had cheated on Dean, who was her longtime boyfriend, who was amazing. Yep. Making out with Jess before Suki's wedding. Oh, and then but it's not even, it's not even just making out with Jess. It's like, emotional. Oh, yeah. She was like emotionally crutching. That doesn't sound right. Crushing. (laughs) Crushing. (laughs) On on Jess the whole time. Like when when she let him drive the car he built her, Mm -hmm. I will never forgive Rory for that. Okay. Never ever. Also, the thing is she comes back from D.C. and she sees Jess is making out with another girl and she's upset even though she is still with Dean. Yep. Like, yes. And the thing the thing is is that it it's not, you know, it's not th- that you're crushing on somebody else. Like you'll sometimes you have feelings for other people if you're in a relationship, but usually if you're a good person, you do something like one, if you're going to do, if you're going to act on it, or you feel like you, you you say like, "Hey, sorry, we're over" to the person that you're yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. Or two, you make every possible step to never see the person that you have a crush on again. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the times it's like just superficial crushes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, like was- that. So it's not a big deal. But this, she was like lying about seeing him, uh, going out of her way, leaving um, her school, ditching school to go see a boy. God, yeah. I sound like an old. <laughs> also, like <laughs> when, when Dean showed up to the house and it was just Lorelai there and then that look and he's like, oh. She's with Dean or she's with Jess, isn't she? Yeah. And like, and like, even Lorelai felt for him. She's like, yeah. Yeah. She told um, Rory off, but she didn't really keep at it, you know? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is, you know, in certain ways, it was kind of like, okay, you know, I think, I, I think she's just, she's trying to, to get Rory to come to the conclusion that she should be. I mean, she she even said it. She she was like, "Well, if you want to be with Jess, go there. He is go go be with Jess." But I think it's a bad idea, and you need to tell Dean, you know. And so she was trying a little bit. I mean, again, I I think Lorelai is a terrible person as well. But but in this particular instance, we're talking about, she at least was trying to get Rory to see that she was making a ridiculous decision. Yeah, and even though like when I was younger, even as a teenager, I was after like Rory graduated, I was more invested in Lorelai's story because. I'm just realizing this because, like, I just did not care about Rory anymore. I was like, yeah, no, go. Ruin your life. I don't care anymore. Well, (laughs) and here's the thing, too. This is the second time she did this to Dean. Granted, I know you two have thoughts, and uh, we all do have thoughts on, like, what happened in between. But she did this with, with Dean to Logan as well. And then Dean had, like, that realization again, like, oh, I really don't belong with you. I no, in your so, world. So she no, she did not to let's be fair on that one. To be fair on that one, she did not have any sort of crush on on Logan really. I think that it was obviously going that way, but I don't really think that she actually emotionally was was but but she wasn't in she wasn't in the relationship with Dean and that was the problem. No. It well, wasn't that she was crushing on somebody else. It right, was that right, right. it was that no, she no, was no. not I was in that relationship. Like she wasn't invested anymore you know what yeah, i mean she wasn't and she wasn't communicating finally, with dean well and then also she had an affair with dean like it's just <laughs> right but granted here's the thing about rory even though she wants to be a journalist she is horrible horrible at communication like just communicate tell people how you're really feeling rory just Oh, I just want to shake her. Well, I don't know why you why you think journalists are better than that at anybody, but <laughs> well, I don't know. You just words. English. I don't know. I, yeah, words. Words. Well, words. I, 
No, I know, but like, but she, she's just. I mean, the whole, the whole thing is just that Lorelai and Rory are are up in their like whole thing about be, they, they think that they are better than people because they, they feel like they are living their own thing. Like they don't want to be rely reliant on anybody else, and so they're like, well, I'm making my own way, and therefore the I'm is. better than everybody, and I, and I need to, I need to look out for me, and I need to look out for my interests and everything like that because. That they're they're not they're unwilling to compromise they're unwilling to do anything they have a vision in their mind of what their life is going to be and what it has to be and nothing else they cannot compromise on it but look how the town treats them I think the town needs to be punished as well for how they <laughs> put <laughs> For how they we put them the on a pedestal and Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> we're not going to go. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. They put them on a pedestal and they're just like, oh, all hell, Rory and Lorelai. They can do no wrong, but they do very much so wrong. I don't yes. know. If that, I mean, I, I, Taylor I makes Rory the ice cream princess. Yep. Yeah, the ice cream queen. No, they they really don't. I mean, they say that they're successful, which is true. I mean, the, the Lorelai really she she left and she worked her way up from you know made it at the Independence Inn to owning her own inn. Okay, and but how she did that was her father made an investment for her when she was born. Yeah. And that's where the money came from. They keep saying they're self-reliant, but like um, no, I'm not saying has to co-sign a loan. No, so then Lorelai can keep the house. No, no, her. no. I'm not saying I'm not saying that they they haven't taken money or or they're not. You know, I'm just I'm saying that this is what the town sees. They see yeah. somebody who came in and and is a success, and then they also see Rory, who's a very smart person, and she really does want to be you know to to like go out there and get a great education and be you know this amazing reporter and all this kind of stuff. And that's the thing is that in their small town, there's not really a ton of that kind of ambition and so i don't think it's them putting them on a pedestal i think it's more so that they just see them as like oh wow it's kind of cool that they're doing this it's something you know a little bit new and different and they're independent and all this kind of stuff because they also don't know them the way that we know them if that's what <laughs> makes sense yeah we're not saying we want perfect characters characters need to have flaws obviously yes. well and that's the thing i actually think i like lorelei more than rory and i enjoyed lorelei's story because i do think she has faults and while i do think lorelei can be selfish at times. I think Rory is more selfish than anyone on the planet. Mm. So I mean, Rory learned it from Lorelai. She learned True. it from watching but, her. But she took it further. The way she treats Lane as a best friend. Oh, oh, and Marty. I, I need to. I, we need to just mention how she treated Marty as well, because I think that was pretty bad. Or am okay, I so crazy? Marty was not the worst thing that she did because. Again, he yeah, was she honestly not great either. Well, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> she should have. Well, she should have seen. She should have seen that he was that he liked her. But at the same time, a lot of people are very oblivious to that. So, and then uh, as soon as he actually said, "Hey, I have feelings for you," she was like, "Well, I'm sorry, I don't," you know. And so yeah. that that was not really. I, I feel like that true. was not honestly one of the the I biggest things. That she, I'm sorry, Marty's girlfriend. She should have just told her like, "Hey, I know Marty. He's lying no, to no, you." No, that's he's not. Weird. That's not on. Rory, that was on Marty. Yeah, that one was not yeah, her either. That was true, him. But she, she was about to, it. but the Marty said, "No, I don't know her." Of all the crappy yeah. things that she's done, that was like one no, there's that, too that much. Was just not her. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Okay, there's a lot. Rory's just the worst. The end. Moving on. Okay, so a lot of the time, like, okay, yes, Rory has her issues, but of course, I didn't see that while I was watching it episode by episode. But there's certain shows that you watch and you're like, I don't root for anyone. And that's glee for me. I had to stop watching because I ended up hating everyone. Yeah. You know, I, I will have to say I've never watched glee. But from what I've heard, I don't want to watch it. Yeah. The thing is, like, this everyone has cheated on every relationship they've been on. And I know they do it for drama, but the second that they had Blaine, who was the one, like, redeeming oh. character. Blaine played Darren Chris, who, of course, I love. He's a amazing. very Potter musical. He's amazing. He's so talented. I'll watch he him really in anything. Is. Except the rest of Glee. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, if... Did he I cheat on? Did he cheat on Kurt, or did Kurt cheat on him? Both. They both cheat on oh, each other. Oh, awesome! Of course. <laughs> yeah, they both cheated on each but other. But didn't Blaine get with Kurt's bully? Yes. 
Which I That's don't understand. That's another trope that. I hate. It's like, oh, the person, the homophobic bully is actually just gay. No, sometimes they're just well, horrible people. Most well, of the time, Glee, they are. I think Lee's setup was, was was just kind of that, though. They they basically just played out any sort of sort of uh trope that they could and dramatic effort the effect that they could because that's kind of what they were going for not that i'm saying that that was good tv but i'm just saying that in general that's what they were doing the original concept supposed to be that glee was about the misfits of the school of their glee club like yeah that's what it was yes and honestly like you you start off in the first season there's rachel blary played by Luce, leah michelle who is Someone in real life you don't really want to root for after right. all things came out. Um, she is cutthroat. She is very self-absorbed. I think maybe it's the beginning of the second season. She sends like somebody who's competition to her to a crack house. Oh, Lord. Like what? She could have gotten murdered. What? You know? <laughs> and there's just like little things like that. She sends someone to a crack house. Yeah, little things like that, you know. Yeah, there's That's so there's, problematic. <laughs> what? It's, it sucks because it's it's one of those things where it started out like a, a a pretty interesting kind of cute concept in general, uh, and then just poof. Like I I don't I don't know why why they leaned so hard in that direction, but it. It, I, yeah, it was that not. Doesn't sound enjoyable, to be honest. No, it was. It was one of those. It's one of those shows that just keeps having to create drama over and over and over again. Um, you know, I mean, soap opera esque, but just not soap opera. Yeah, and yeah, like the per, the the teacher Will Schuster is supposed to be like this good guy, and I, again, good people can make mistakes. They screw up. Some of the stuff you can't go back from, like he constantly tried to like sabotage his love interest relationship and not in humorous sitcom ways, like really, you know, bad, bad ways. Like um, stalkers. He prevented ways? a trans student from using the bathroom of their preferred gender. I'm sorry. I didn't what? know that either. <laughs> I am sorry. He did what now? Yeah. This was only a couple of years ago too. My jaw just hit the floor. Okay. No. And he twerked with his students. His underage student, students. He's saying that Robin's that the Robin the Robin Thick yeah, rapey song. song Lord Lines. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. The, the the whole thing again. I stopped watching. I stopped watching Glee just because I saw it going in this direction. Because originally I did like I I cared kind of I cared about him. I cared about um you know the, the I can't remember her name now, but whoever his love interest was the Emma. Yeah, yeah. I I cared I cared about that and all of that but but I saw it going this direction and I was just, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it. I I don't want I like I don't understand why they would do this. It's not like it's not like uh, uh well, I'm sorry. Do you have more to go on this? No, no. Okay. Just- it's not like so another thing that I've that I've come up when I was looking at this stuff is Gossip Girl. And I mean, you just know from the start that you are going to hate every single one of these characters. And I think that that makes it that makes it easier to swallow. It's because in shows like that they know how to present their characters in a way like, "Hey, they're not good people." But that's when cuz I I actually really like Gossip Girl. Oh yeah, no, and... I lo- I loved watching Gossip Girl, but I but I also hated every character because it was but... just but that's when they have like good moments. You're like, I love Blair. Yeah, no, I know. That's what I'm saying is that it's it's a kind of blurred line situation. But overall, you know that these are terrible human beings. Yeah, and so it's it's one of those things where you know they they come up with like uh, in some of these lists, Dan Humphrey is is the worst, and you liked him. I'm like, I I didn't really like I didn't like him. I didn't like anybody. Honestly, the oh, only no. person that I that I ended up actually like. You know, thinking was kind of an okay person was Serena because everything kept happening happening to her. True. I actually <laughs> like she, really liked Blair. <laughs> well, but they, but no, that's the thing. I liked all the characters despite despite myself. What I'm saying though is that I knew they were terrible people, and that made it easier to stomach. And oh, no, also, I know. I, I was just you. one of those... I was just saying, like, I actually ended up feeling for for Blair. Well, you feel for every one of them at some point in time. But my my whole point is just that, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you like when you like a character the whole time and then you go back and realize, oh, 
they were terrible the whole time. Oh um, no, these with, people. With everybody we knew. Was talking about Gossip Girl. Yeah, with yeah. everybody was talking about Gossip Girl, I was just like, but you know that they're terrible. The whole yeah, time. no, you don't start off liking them. You go, oh, all right, what train wrecks are these people? Even, like, da- yeah, even Dan, I, I don't. I never anyway. really liked Dan in particular. I thought he was a dick. Yeah, all of all of them are terrible in their own ways. Yeah, anyway, I just wanted Dan, to throw that out there. Uh, is yeah, Dan ahead. supposed to be like your entry character? Right. Yeah. Like, yes. But yeah. but uh, but he do- he has his own issues that he just, just he's just yeah. He's I don't a know. It's a, it's a lot. Yeah, but you know he's a dick from the start. Like, but here's but like like Rory, we're presented with here's this likable smart girl, but really I just want to punch her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so another show that if you watch again and you kind of grow up and you realize hey that's not cool that's how i met your mother and barney uh i just want to say i also have never seen this show (laughs) what have you watched okay no wait don't go into that that will take a while we won't Um, yeah so he does things like he slept with over 200 women or something like that he has he has it as a list he photographs and videotapes all his conquests. Well, basically, Wait, with every- their knowledge or not? No, without no, no, their no, 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 no. I, so this is the thing, Brie. Barney has been a problematic character from the beginning of the show. Everybody has said so. It's just that because of everything that has happened recently, it's it's become more of a thing of like, well, why why would you even make this character? Because everything he does is 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 really shady. Uh, so and do you, you, they like him, like, or do well, they? Well, they they think he's disgusting for that, but but there's other. Th- that's the thing is that they they like him for other reasons, but but they think they think that that his stuff, what he does, is disgusting. At the same time, sometimes they they just like watch it, kind of as like observers, like, oh, they don't stop it. It's they crazy that yeah, because oh, he would have been thrown in jail. Lily says, if- Lily literally says, oh, he's an awful human being, but he's one of my best friends. Yeah. So they're yeah, kind of- they're allowing his behavior to continue. Yes. That's just as bad. Right, but that was the thing is that it was just supposed to, it was just supposed to be kind of a a thing on the show and it wasn't supposed to be felt on a on a deeper level because well, it was wait, a comedy so you're just show so it was to to laugh at him being a um a creep. A, yeah, a predator. supposed to be played You're as supposed a to joke. laugh at him being a predator. Yep. How how is that funny? I don't know. Uh, it was early 2000s. It was the yeah, I mean like that's what I'm saying in in the context of people not It's not that it was ever okay, but there was a time when people just didn't necessarily take it so seriously as far as you know, the whole Me Too movement slash not really, you know what I mean? Like, it, it, I'm not, I'm not saying it was ever, it was ever a good idea. Yeah, I'm just like, saying that like. <laughs> after all this, me, the Me Too stuff came out, it's like, oh, wait, I'm not supposed to be treated like that? Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but that was the thing it's is so that bad. it wasn't, it wasn't saying that, it, it wasn't even saying that treating people like this is okay. Obviously, just having the character made it seem like, th- like maybe it was, but. But yeah, it, it I mean, was it was it was funny at the time because people didn't take it so seriously that kind of situation. Mm. Even well, though it, it was never weird, okay. like in a sitcom situation, it feels weird. Like I watch a lot of like, um, but that's why that's I don't why know, like they get away HBO with it. Showtime shows, and you know they have really flawed characters who can be kind of come off predatorial, but like they get their like second comings. You know what I mean? Like they get. They get karma thrown at them. Did did Barney yeah, ever get karma? Yes, he did. But but I mean, like it it was it wasn't all the time. It, but he did he did get some some yeah. But yeah, and at the end, he started caring about women when he had a daughter, which is something I hate. Is like men men like only realize like women should be treated correctly because they have a daughter. Yeah, at least it was something. But I, but yeah, it was. Um, but that's why they could get away with it. Is what I'm is what I'm saying is that it was a sitcom. They you know couldn't I mean? make it today. Yeah, it wouldn't. It wouldn't oh, work today, and it only worked back then because they they did kind of 
they made it part of the sitcom. They made it kind of a little like a trope kind of out there. Uh, like, oh, like it's this Ronnie person and is, his hijinks. Yeah. And like this and like this person is so ridiculous that there's no way he exists kind of situation. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, I think that's why they got away with it is because they're like, well, of course, this is a ridiculous character because this doesn't happen. I mean, again, it, it was just before everybody kind of actually looked at the situation. Uh, OK. 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 Just a few more yeah. things he did. One, he pretended to be a lesbian so he could sleep with a lesbian. He dressed <laughs> yeah. up like one. Not good. And then one time, Barney says he sold a woman. He says, I quote, at one point, I'm pretty sure I sold a woman. I didn't speak the language, but I shook the guy's hand and he left the keys to a Mercedes and I just left her there. I get, okay, so out of context, it's so bad. That's what I'm saying is that I'm not I'm not defending it, but like again, out of context, it, it's a thousand times worse. No. And it is, like, I haven't and seen then, it, so this is like I I feel I know that's what I'm saying. It's a ranked. thousand times worse out of context, and yes, it's bad, but but yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, there he has so many theories about women that it's just. Really I honestly, so gross. here's the thing, and you know everybody, everybody talks about. So on 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 the whole like worst ca- worst characters that you liked for, at first, they talk about Barney. They also talk about Ted, and honestly, I feel like I feel like Ted is almost worse because Barney, you know, is a creep. That well, no, yeah, but also Barney, you know, is like it, they're just playing this off as like a character kind of situation, and like it's just it just is what it is. He's like, so he's outrageous that he that couldn't way. be like a real person. Really. Yeah, he's so outrageous he couldn't be a real person. Other but people Ted, are, but kind Ted, of <laughs> Ted could be, and that's the thing is that I feel like it, because of that, because he's supposed to be more of a real person slash somebody you're supposed to be uh, empathizing with. That rooting stuff, for yeah rooting for a lot of the stuff that he does is is worse yeah he doesn't take no as an answer he stalks he is obsessive even though he's like in love with someone else he's like starts a serious relationship he cheats he sleeps around a lot too like yeah it's he pulls things like barney does sometimes yeah, and it's all supposed to be in in light of like, well, I'm at least I'm not that bad or whatever. But but it's it's really just that he is that bad, and but he's taking everything more seriously, so somehow it's worse. Yeah, <laughs> and Ted makes Robin get rid of her dogs because they remind him of her exes. What? Yeah, yeah. What? Anyone anyone tried to get rid of Bucky? I will. Cut I'll them throw them out them. for you. That's not yeah. okay. What? Yeah, because her exes got her all her dogs, each dog. So whenever he sees them, he sees her exes. Yeah, because there was a whole thing about stuff because she uh, she also wanted him to get rid of a whole bunch of other stuff that was at his his apartment uh, in order to because because they were they were reminding her of his exes. And that just seems toxic. Well, no, but I mean, but I mean, it was. Lily, who said, but they're her dogs. You cannot ask her to get rid of her dogs. But he did, and she did. <laughs> yes, yeah, she did. Although it sounds like they probably ha- were having a better life where, yeah, they, where they went. <laughs> not, not figuratively, but literally went off to live in a, a farm her aunt had. Instead of being in a one-bedroom Brooklyn apartment. Five yeah, dogs. That's so, I don't even dogs. know when she goes and sees them. I like, don't know either, but she's... who knows? Off, mm. off camera. <laughs> crazy another character i want to talk about is from the office and that is mr jim helpert yeah he's in a lot of these lists yeah i have rewatched the office a lot of (laughs) times probably more than i want to admit and i loved jim helpert i think we all did we all love his little charming little smarmy smirk um but after a while i was like oh man Michael Scott was kind of right. Jim Halpert is kind of a dick. Um, couple examples. One, he bought a house without discussing it with Pam. That to me just doesn't sit well. But she loved she loved it though. That's she the thing. Did. I think if it was I think if it was somebody else, it would have been maybe an issue, but he 
he did it as a grand romantic gesture for for her and she because and then she and he was Didn't actually he a little do it nervous for about her it. though did yes, he, he do actually, it for her he was actually pretty nervous about it too because she went around and he's just like oh god i don't know like maybe i didn't shouldn't have done this and then she was like you bought me a house this is okay. amazing okay another thing is <laughs> i think she was pregnant at off. that time too so i'm no, like, true i think so i haven't watched it in a while so that's a little bit more forgivable, but he's done more stuff. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> when he tried to leave Pam at Michael Scott's condo for that dinner party, um, making up every excuse in the book, and he was just going to leave Pam there to suffer that dinner. Okay. That- yeah, can- I, I mean. Can you excuse that one, Vanessa? I. <laughs> Yes, I can. No. <laughs> I mean, no, 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 no. Because I, because I could probably see, like, I don't know. I feel like I could see that happening in real life, and it just being kind of like something you go back and you'd be like, "Oh my god, I cannot believe you did that. I hate you." Also, here's what happened. <laughs> like, honestly, I, I don't know. That's really not. That's not the worst thing that anybody could ever do to somebody. I mean, I'm not saying he's killing her, but like. He literally was like, no, you're going to do this. And then also the time when Pam really didn't want to go out to dinner or to lunch with um, Michael and her mom when they were dating. And he was basically like, no, you have to come type of thing. You know, she didn't ask for much. She just wanted to to get out of it and to process her feelings, which she really didn't have time to process either. It's kind of a dick move. Part. I don't remember that part. I mean, the only the only time I ever really remember him being a dick, or at least that, because I don't I don't really with him and Pam. It was just when when they had the whole situation of him being in Philadelphia and doing the writing thing like that. That was all. That was he was kind of being a dick at that point. Uh, but the 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 big the bigger thing is just all the pranks he pulls on Dwight. Yeah, well, and yeah. that's the thing is that um, it is funny. It is funny, that. like in smaller doses. Which again, this wasn't you know this was before streaming, so you're not necessarily watching them back to back to back at that point. So smaller doses, it's like okay, kind of funny, but at the same time, all compiled into like one, one watch through, you're like, oh my gosh, okay, this is uh this is a lot. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, okay, just a few more. I'm looking up. He accidentally tells everyone that Pam's pregnant, which, I mean, isn't quite on purpose, but yeah. He lets Michael fall into the koi pond. Do you yep. remember that? Oh, like, I remember that episode. They look at the security footage and Michael, like, reaches for him and Jim steps away. Yep. And it's only because he was upset that Michael was accompanying him. Also, his whole relationship with Karen. Yeah. Poor Karen. I always feel bad Poor for these like Karen. secondary romances, which you know aren't going to last because in those will they, won't they? Yeah, but I guess I just, I guess I just have like a less of a problem with him than I do with with Michael Scott because. But he's here's just... the thing: you're not supposed to like Michael at first. That's the thing: you're you're not supposed to be like. I guess that's true. I this guess that's is true. the guy you're supposed to fall in but love he... with, Jim Halpert. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess so. Uh, Michael Scott has his moments too, but he's yeah, yeah. I guess that's true. He's a he, he. You know, Michael Scott is a flawed human from the get go, and then he vastly improves uh, somewhat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I guess. I just I I keep having moments where I think of stuff like he was. Oh, he went out with that one that one woman that I think Pam set him up with or something. Yes, that was awful. She, yeah, and he he was just like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this." cuz cuz he thought that she was like, I can't remember what ugly. it was, ugly and bo- ugly and boring and everything. Yeah. And, and he thought it was like a joke or something, and he just wouldn't drop it. And it's it's stuff like that but, that is just but like But that is so Michael. Awkward. That is Michael. And Pam knew that when she set the lady up with him, which I was like, Pam, what are you doing to your landlord? But that's the thing. I don't think I think that he, I think that she thought he might actually be a nice person in general, like at least at heart, which sometimes he was and sometimes he just was really, really awful. Yeah. But I mean, the show sets it up where you're not supposed to really you're supposed to laugh at Michael Scott. Really. Yeah. Oh, my God. So the time that Jim breaks up with people. He breaks up with um, Amy Adams, Katie, on, Yo, booze, in on the middle boat. booze cruise. Yeah. And they're stuck on a boat. He's that- in New York with Karen, and he just leaves her there. Okay. that's It's just a lot. But it's never 
as bad as what Michael did when he promised all those children he would pay for their college. And then well, nothing's bad as that. But again, <laughs> he is kind of the worst from the get go. Jim is supposed to be your fave, the heartthrob, the golden boy. Okay. I would render, though, that Jim is one of those people where it's like he has, like we said, all these characters. It's understandable that they have flaws, but some of them are just unforgivable. I feel like I feel like for the most part, Jim is not not necessarily forgivable, but it's one of those things where he at least is not he doesn't turn into somebody that you just overall yes, he's hate. not Rory, but yeah. there are a <laughs> lot of things that I. I don't know. Some things just don't sit well with me anymore, Jim Halpert. Fair. It's fair. Um, I'm going to bring up one that's going to upset Vanessa. Oh, God. Ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. If you can you can defend him. Okay. If you want. But okay. But, Brie, I will need some backup. Oh, I don't even know where this is going. Okay. Where's, where's Arzu? She's usually on my side. <laughs> it's Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Okay. Uh. What? Yes, listen. Okay, as a kid, I loved those movies and I thought they were great. Then I was rewatching as an adult and he was testing his back to his future car thing. He sent his dog to the future, not knowing what would happen. That's strike one. PETA, get it. (laughs) But two, he tests the car with like it coming at himself and Marty, like willing to kill himself. And Marty, if it didn't work. And so many of things didn't work before. I just want to put a little background onto this for our listeners. Vanessa's Vanessa's wedding RSVP card is of her and Alex dressed up as Alex and and Doc, right? As Marty and Doc. Yes. Marty and Doc, it's, yeah. It's the movie post. It's the movie poster. Yeah, the movie poster. Uh, she loves yeah, this movie. But – I, okay, so yeah, here's the th- – so he's like – but he's a – okay. I mean, First the dog all, is <laughs> kind of bad, Vanessa. No, 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 no. But here's the here's the thing. I feel like he – yes, okay, he's, he's kind of this mad scientist sort of situation. But I don't think that he is the type of person to have done either of those things. With evil if he intent. If 100% sure no, he was that it was shocked. going to work. No, he he was shocked when it came back cold. That was the only thing he didn't figure out. So, yes, that does suck because it does mean that he wasn't accounting for something. So that does that does bring into question the whole thing. But I don't think that he would have done that if he wasn't 100% sure because he freaking loved that dog. And he loved the dog before. He had, like, everything. He he always had a dog and he was always, like, caring for the dogs. I don't know. I feel like, mm. I feel like he had a lot more foresight than that. I... Oh yeah, but, um, Candace, I'm not. Uh, the okay, thing okay, is, he wasn't. Oh, oh, okay. Other okay. fact I have. Okay, what's well, the other okay. fact? Bob Gale, who wrote Back to the Future, said that Doc Brown committed insurance fraud by burning down his family mansion for the money. Huh? There, yes, that's, true. Sure. that's true. That's true. <laughs> I forgot that part. What? Well, it's not. It's not like he says it or anything. It's just. It's just kind of like one of those things that's out there. Yeah, and there's like a newspaper headline. Yes, yes, yes. Somewhere. So yeah, that is one of them. But yeah. But I mean, Ooh, I'm on the yeah. fence. I'm on the fence, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, again, it's not like. But that's the thing. He wasn't. <laughs> yes, a lot. Some of the stuff that he did was questionable, but. But again, insurance fraud is not good. I just don't think that it's one of those things that is like is completely detrimental to the entirety of his character. Also, I mean, he the, the another thing that's just the the craziest thing is that he did steal plutonium from terrorists. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a major thing. And he's willing to like work with them too and well, he did no, but he but he didn't. He stole he he. But the thing is, the worst thing about that. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, is that I always kind of looked at it as he took the plutonium from them in order to prevent that because he he made them something, but it was something that didn't work, so they couldn't carry carry out whatever terrorist plans, which is good. But he, the ulterior motive was that he needed plutonium. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we can agree with this then because I I. I I know he loves his dog, but it is kind of selfish to send his dog on an experiment. Well, I just don't understand why they needed to send the dog 
at all. Right. But again, that that just all that that all comes back down to my first point of I don't think that he would have sent the dog if he wasn't a hundred percent sure that this was gonna work. Okay, one last one. Yes. Okay. We we don't like talking about Harry Potter so much because Right. JK. She, she who shall not be named. Right. Yeah. But I will say this. Um I'm gonna say Dan Radcliffe wrote them and it, it's all fine. It's fine. No, they can't really do it. Okay. <laughs> well, in my head, it makes me happy. Okay, for a while, we were all big Hermione Granger fans. But are you going to ruin Hermione? She's a cold. What are you trying to do? Bitch. What? Like, what do you mean she's a cold-hearted bitch? Some of the things this woman does. Okay, are you just... are you trying to talk about her turning Rita Skeeter into a beetle and keeping her in a jar? No, Rita Skeeter turned herself into a beetle, but yeah, she. Puts her in her jar. She disfigures Marita Edgecombe. Well, she was a snitch. Snitches get <laughs> stitches. <laughs> <laughs> so Hermione plays by Chris terms. Okay. She, I know she didn't have a choice, but she sends Umbridge out to the centaurs. And no, you know, yeah, to be a Oh, come on, though. No. Like, I, I mean, she deserved Umbr- it. I'm sorry. She deserves it. She's a war. She's worse than Voldemort. I okay. was happy. Umbridge, okay. Umbridge is a freaking sociopath, and she would have continued to yeah. torture those children. I know, I know, I know. Exactly. Okay. When they had to it's, get to the it's ministry. War. Fuck Even Umbridge. Though technically, they didn't need to get to the ministry because that was just a fake vision that Harry had. So, yeah. Well. Okay. But anyway, also, just for reading, she has like a massive like white savior complex with the right. elves. Oh. Well, no one else is standing well, up for the elves. Yeah, I mean, like, the bad part about that was more so just that the elves in, like, in this world, they do not want to do, be be saved. Oh, that's um, true. Yeah, she just, like, hides. <laughs> she hides clothing. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty bad. That Because that was, like, terrifying them. Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll give you that one. That was pretty bad. That is bad, <laughs> and you're right. That is kind of white savior. <laughs> Uh, because she believes they need to be free, then that's it's the right like, thing to do. It's one of those things yeah. where it's like, even if your heart is in the right place, you got to read the situation and you you got to you gotta not just do something because you think it's right, you know, yeah. and righteous. Yeah, that's pretty bad. And, <laughs> and granted, like, she doesn't really know how to deal with her emotions because she did send birds to attack Ron that one time. But again, he's an idiot, so I really didn't mind. But that's I would have been whole, terrified yeah. for it. That yeah, terrifying. I mean, we got. I would have been terrified. Everyone knows bird Ron's came the worst. After me. <laughs> I, uh, ooh, well, huh. I don't know. I, I mean, feel like here's the thing. She's, she's like, uh, lawfully, uh, neutral, lawfully chaotic. like the best and smartest I, person. Like, yeah, well, yeah, and like, see, if we're talking Harry Potter and the people that you liked, and now are just kind of like, eh, I don't know about that, is is Dumbledore? I mean, because yeah. he has he has certain things in there that that are iffy, like the whole situation with his sister and and with uh, Grindelwald and all of that, and also not communicating but, to Harry at all, and just leaving Harry no, in the dark. Right, that is the biggest thing. Is the is the whole? I have this plan that I'm operating silently. And I'm using children as my as my chess pieces, basically. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, he he had his whole quote unquote reasoning for it. As far as I, just, I, I don't know. Do we ever find out exactly? Like I assume that it, it just has to. It just had to be like, well, if you knew this at this time, then you wouldn't have done this, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, he didn't know that. It's not like he's all powerful and all knowing. No, otherwise he would have snapped his finger and Voldemort would have been gone. Yeah. I don't know. It's funny because, like, Hermione tells Harry he has a saving people thing, which is, like, saver complex. Mm-hmm. And it's like, hey, Hermione, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Could be one of her faults. But you know what? For the most part, I- I'm still with snitches get stitches. So. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she was. I don't know. She was a betrayer, betrayer, betrayer. Everyone needed to know. <laughs> Just don't betray that people part. and you're fine. Okay. Well, is there anybody else y'all would like to mention 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have we have to mention this for for Arzu. We promised Ross Geller from Friends. From Friends. Uh, and honestly, I don't know anyone who liked him, but I guess people must have liked him because they were like, "Oh, he and Rachel should be together forever." Well, that was the thing is that Ross and Rachel were the couple. You know what I mean? Like that was that was the quintessential nineties. You know, will they won't they couple? And from at the beginning, it was a it was. He did seem like this kind of sweet person because you you see the whole background of him always loving her from from the beginning, and he he went he decided he was going to go go to the prom with her because she didn't have a date, and then he got decimated, and you know he treated her very well, and then it just all fell apart and just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Can I say something about Ross Geller? Yes. Now I haven't. <laughs> I haven't seen all the episodes, but from what I've seen, one, Ross Geller dates his student, which is sketch yes. beyond yep. belief. He does. And two, I really think he has an anger issue with his first wife, Carol, being well, a he lesbian. He has anger issues. Granted, to- granted, yes, she cheated on him, but he's more focused on the fact that she's a lesbian to the point where I'm like, can you not, sir? Yeah, but that that also was one of those things where it's a victim of the time. The 90s, I know. Yeah. Because uh, wasn't wasn't Chandler's Ch- Chandler's Chandler's dad was uh is, it was a drag queen, but uh not a drag queen because then she became a she, right? Well, but they had a female no, actress They had play... a female actress. Yes, they did have a female actress playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh and so but I don't think that they ever really said that that uh, the dad was trans. I don't yeah. think that they, they ever. They didn't said go that. into detail about it. Yeah, they, they were more just making fun of Chandler just, for having a dad who wears a dress. Yeah, who was in, who was in drag. Disgusting. That was the whole situation. Um, and that's not the point of this because whatever. No, but, and <clears throat> no. Oh, okay. Ross Geller tries to make out with his cousin. Oh, oh yeah, yeah which is <laughs> disgusting. Uh, everyone tried to make out with the cousin. Okay, no, oh, he gets everyone. upset with. He gets upset with Freddie Prince Jr.'s character being a nanny to his daughter because he's a guy. Oh yeah, he has a lot of the whole oh, gender issue. I don't situation. like that. He because what back also with with the whole with with Ben with his son, he was trying to get get him to stop playing with the Barbie. Oh yeah, and 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 play with the GI Joe. And Ew. Then, um And then and then uh, uh, Carol, I think it was Carol who said. Hey, you know what happens maybe to to little boys who play with Barbies? Maybe they end up becoming good dads. And it was like burn like that. <laughs> um, I also know that um oh the oh yeah, when he made that club with Brad Pitt, which is an I hate Rachel club, and is it because she just wouldn't go out with him? And wasn't he in college when she was in high school? That's a little creepy. No, it was because, but but no, it was because she was she basically bullied him, made fun of him for being fat. No, no, but Ross was in that club. No, no, Monica was. I think Monica was in the I Hate Rachel club. It was something I don't remember. It was either I thought it was Ross. I don't remember, but either way, they they had they had um, reason to be upset about it, but because. But here's the thing, though. Wasn't Ross in... Co- this is what I don't understand. Was Ross in college when Rachel and Monica were in high school? Yes, but o- but he's only, like, two or three years older. So the ah. whole thing... The- no, it's it's yeah. not... It's really... It's really not that big a deal. I mean, it, he wasn't trying to hit on her when she was, like, 14. He was... But then... Yeah, she was, like, 17, 18, and he was 19, 20. yeah. I say if you could be at school but then at the same time. When he was in the, when was he in the I Hate Rachel club then? In high school, I think. Okay, one second. Yeah, look it up because again, I don't know if it was Ross. I think it was Monica because both him and her were fat in high school. It was it, Brad Pitt's character was I Hate Rachel, and Ross founded it. Oh, if Ross did find found it. Yeah. Okay. I just don't understand the timeline is is my confusion right now. It, but it's because it's a sitcom timeline. I don't think the timelines matter. Okay, just a few other things that Ross did that are absolutely terrible. He wouldn't let Phoebe believe that her cat was her mother reincarnated. Oh, that was sad. Yeah. Yeah. That was really mm-hmm. sad. Let people, let people deal with their grief, you know? 
Yeah. And it was just, it was, uh, that was, and that was actually a moment that I was really upset that they, that they did the way that they did because he, you know, so Phoebe puts down the cat and is just like, Ross, how many parents have you lost? Yeah. And and he goes, none. And she's like, well, then you don't understand how it feels when one of them comes back. And I'm like, oh man, you went for the laugh and you could have, you could have just like decimated him, man. (laughs) Sitcom, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm. When he was dating his student, he refused to let her go to spring break. He was thinking he was jealousy. Yeah. So he's and then they finally well, she, well, he finally she, he finally was like, okay, I understand because because she was just like, hey, listen, I'm just gonna go and and have fun with my friends. He's like, okay, and then a whole bunch of guys carry her out, which was like that was that was a great moment because. It was just, it was like, hey, screw you. (laughs) Right. And I think we have to do an honorable mention because this one has a whole series about how they are the worst on Funny or Die. But it's Zach Morris from Say by the Bell. He is trash upon trash. And you're supposed to like him. And I hate him. I don't know enough about Saved by the Bell to actually talk about this. No, I was just saying, like, it's already been talked about so much because there's a whole series about it. Um. But it's really good if you want to check out that series and ruin your childhood. <laughs> Zach Morris is trash. Okay, is there? Okay, is that it? I think we're. I'm sure there are more. Oh, there's so, so many more. So, there's there's so I I would no, love. No, there's so to know. many more. And the set, the th- I mean, because there's there's a whole bunch of other ones that are like that have i've read about that have ruined stuff for me like scrubs or whatever even though i love scrubs it, i will never stop loving scrubs in fact i will never stop loving a lot of these shows that we just and movies that we talked about but you know you have to i think i feel like you just have to have a different perspective on it after realizing these things about these characters and if you, as long as as long as you keep that perspective you're okay but it's just yeah it, it's definitely one of those things where you're disappointed that it turned out this way. <laughs> but at least we're healthy enough to recognize the signs of an awful person now. That's true. But please, I want to know what what you guys out there, you know, who you really think is the worst now from movies, books, TV shows. Let us know. I want to hear you guys' thoughts about this. Yes, you can follow us at the Geeky Waffle on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. We're geeky underscore waffle on Twitter. Make sure to join our Patreon, patreon.com slash the geeky waffle, where it's we can interact. It's a dollar to join our Discord group. Yes, you get some bonus content. $3 to get our waffles after dark. Let's get syrupy. Oh, God. All right, well, we all hope you all stay geeky. <laughs>